Hi guys, um, beefcake's all tucked up and having a snooze over winter. I call me a fair with the driver, but I don't like taking it out in the salt because um, it just really does deteriorate things. Anything that's not protected just uh, turns red rusty overnight. So it makes it really hard making a video about beefcake every month when it's winter. So I was kind of thinking, what shall I do? And this month I've come up with a few little tips and pointers and mods um, that you might want to make over winter um, to your car. Um, so the things that, that I've kind of done in the past um, and I find them really helpful and useful um, and they're all kind of relatively easy stuff to, to do so have a watch, see what you think If over winter for whatever reason you've got your wings off and you're, you're doing some work on the volant or you've got some repairs to make um, or if you just want something to do um, one job I really really recommend is making your volant removable um, taking the engine in and out is relatively simple anyway but when the valance comes off, it's literally a case of putting the engine on the jack, um, unbolting it, and it slides straight out. Simple as that. So it makes a job, an easy job even easier. So there's none of the cockling to get the exhaust under the valance, there's none of the cockling the back and lifting the body up to get it over the top of the fan housing, and yeah, it just makes it an absolute doddle. So it's definitely worth doing if you've got the time to, to do it. Um, so I can't really show you on this car because um, there's no inner wings from that point backwards, which is a little bit different under there to, to start the bug. Um, however, um, I'll ping a picture of how I did it on a, uh, a previous bug, it's not a very good one. I'm going to try and show you now on a piece of paper what I actually did. So once the, the old volance was removed and ground off, so it, it's tacked on on the top of the wing there. Um, as you get a new panel, um, and it's a bit of a two-man job, you're going to need someone to help you do this. You get it all lined up, uh, fit it into place again. You obviously want it flush with your wings and you want it better than I've done it here at the bottom. Lined up nicely um, at the bottom. That's actually the wings that are rubbish, not the valance. Um, and what you'll find is on the inner wing, so as it wraps around the, the inner wing, I'll just show you. So if you do a line like that, that's effectively this line here um, where the wing beading sits. And then it folds over, wraps around the, the inner wing. Well in there, on the inner wing, is a couple of wing bolts. And what the valance effectively does, it wraps around, but it clearances, it goes around the actual bolt holes, so it's not in the way, so you obviously can take the, the bolts out and remove wings. So what I effectively did, I'll get my closer if I can, I've got a Rolf's Car 2 Club, is I got a couple of penny washers, they were wing washers, but I tend to use slightly larger ones. Um, and put have to do it at the side of the valance to start, just to get the markings. So your, your penny washer is going to sit something like that if you've got a big open one. Say, so you could use an 8mm, but I think I use a 10 just to give me a bit of, bit of play, a bit of movement. When it's clamped up, it's solid anyway. So get your penny washers in the right place. What you'll find is the overlap over the, the volante panel. So I literally ground that part of the overlap off the penny washers. And then I welded it into, in line with the actual side of the volance panel. So what that means is to remove your volance all you have to do is take two wing bolts out or a fork to each side and it's out, it's job done. Um, getting it back in obviously it's a little bit more fiddly but it's easy. Um, <laughs> and it's a worthwhile job doing if you've got the time. That's just the way I came up with this. There's lots of ways, if you look online there's lots of different ways of doing it but I say that's the way I did on the previous one. When I did mine, I actually it actually sat a little bit high uh, the volants, but when I had the the wing bead on, you couldn't really tell to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, that is the trickiest part: is just getting it all lined up in the first place and marked out. Um, but just tack it, test it, see if it looks right, and then give it a final weld and job well worth doing. It might be an obvious one, but nothing kills a battery faster than the cold in winter. So I've lost so many batteries over the years from having a car that's been sat for a while. Um, it's all connected so it's little bits of power being taken from, from different bits and pieces and then the battery runs low, get a few cold nights, <laughs> one dead battery. Um, so I've been using one of these for years, this box under charge, this one was my granddad's, that's how old it is. Um, and they do work well, however, they upgraded a couple of years ago to what I got, is a CTEC one. Um, it's one of the lower, uh, it's an MXS5 this one, so it's one of the, the lower end spec ones. Um, but it's brilliant because when you're not using your car, 
you can plug it in, uh, attach it to your battery and leave it. So you're not going to forget to charge it up and it keeps your battery topped up. So basically it'll charge up to the level it wants to be at um, and then it switches to a trickle feed. It just drip feeds it a little bit just to keep it at the right level. Uh, it monitors the battery level charge and uh, yeah, it keeps your batteries alive. Uh, my dad's had one of these, or actually a slightly better model, but he had one of these on his car for, God, years um, outside his house. Um, and it's, you can still start it. So yeah, if you, uh, if you want your battery to live through winter, keep it on charge with a decent charger. I mean, this one I think was about 65 quid, which is a lot of money for a charger, I know. Um, but it's been well worth the investment. Um, and I'll just show you how I hook it into beef. So you can use sand of crocodiles onto your battery. However, if you can extra, um, you can get a tail which you connect to your battery and then basically that plugs straight into it. So I have the tail stuck out the um, just by the, the door in the car and then I can just plug it in dead easily, two second job, plug in the charge and, just, and walk away and leave it. So when it's sat there for a, a few weeks not running, or possibly months over winter, I don't ever have to worry about it. Um, I don't tend to leave it on all the time, I, I do tend to put it on for uh, a few days and then take it off, um, but I'm quite full of that sort of thing, but you say, you can just leave them. So uh, just down behind the chair, there's, there's a little plug, so, so I just uh, feed the wire through the window and uh, plug in there, takes two seconds, no flat battery. Uh, a modification I definitely recommend is fitting wheel studs. Uh, I'm not sure why it wasn't done originally, to be honest, probably cost, I don't know. Um, however, it's so easy and it makes taking the wheels, uh, or putting the wheels back on at least, so much easier. Um, it's, it's a real no-brainer. Um, so this setup is pretty much standard, obviously I've converted it to Porsche 5, but other than that it's a standard Beetle uh, disc or rotor. Um, you can buy the, the studs very easily online, um, I think mine came from eBay. Um, there's two types, there's pressing ones and then there's the screwing ones which is what these are um, and they literally just screw in as you would um, a beetle nut, uh, sorry a beetle bolt um, and obviously I got longer ones than I needed um, because at the time I didn't know what wheel option I was actually going for um, and then cut them down to, to where they needed to be um, do make sure you get the correct grade ones not some random bit of metal off uh, eBay um, they have to be to the correct grade and I'll try and find it and post it on the video link um, so yeah, so I did screw them in, um, and they were the the sit pretty flush at the back of the uh, the back of the disc here. I gave mine a quick zap of uh, weld on the back, a little single spot on, to stop them from spinning out again. Um, I mean, you don't actually have to. I don't, I don't believe um, you could possibly use thread lock, but I didn't like that idea. Um, but yeah, so a spot of weld. Be careful not to put too much heat into them though, because they're graded graded steel. And you don't want to uh, alter their strength at all. Um, ground that uh, nice and neat and jobs are good in. Um, obviously when you fit studs you need to use a wheel nut rather than the, uh, the bolts. Um, these ones are ordered as Porsche 944 ones because I needed some for the rear and I got a full set um, but I believe the, the radiuses on these is the same as a, a bug one um, so they should work for both. Easy peasy. Definitely worth doing guys. I've saved the best for last. Now you probably don't want me bleating on about safety and blah 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 this is a really important thing. Um, basically, here in the UK, and I think also in America, and so I assume worldwide, um, they're making a lot of changes to fuel. Um, at the minute, we have up to 5% ethanol in our, in our fuel, and um, I believe it's going up to 10% next year. Now, if you've got an old Volkswagen that has pipe in it that looks something like that, the old black braided rubber pipe that we're all used to, um, and it hasn't been changed in a few years, you need to change it, okay? <laughs> uh, basically, the new fuels, uh, well, the ethanol in the new fuels, eats rubber like ugh, it's like a pig to truffles. It absolutely loves it. Um, and you have different grades. There's the R7 grade, which is the older. It's supposed to be a little bit resistant, but in practice, it's not that resistant. And uh, the new R R9 rubber um, is supposed to be resistant, but again, there's reports it's only lasting a couple of years. So if that's only lasting a couple of years, what's your old rubber going to be doing? It's not going to be doing a lot. I actually had some of this in the garage, unused for a few years, and I put pressurised water through it, and it piddled out like a, like a sieve. 
Um, so you can't trust the old rubber stuff anyway, so you should be replacing it, but with the new ethanol you need to look at replacing. And obviously with mine it's a little bit different because it's fuel injection and also you've got a feed and return line. Um, so previously I've been using this stuff, which is quite a chunky beast. Um, it's got, I can't remember now, about three mil walls all the way around, it's reinforced, it's double lead, even I'm pooing it. Um, so I'm replacing all my lines um, for one of only a couple of things which I know is going to be relatively safe or going to be safe with ethanol which is uh, PTFE or Teflon lines so this is actually a 10 metre coil and it's cost me 91 quid which is a lot of money for, for fuel loads obviously if you've got a, an air cooled bug you don't need as much as that because you're only going down the, the beetle once um, and you can use the original um, copper lines as well um, but as I'm 8 mil lines um, and I want to replace it front to back and I've got to return for the fuel pump for fuel injection um, I need a lot more <laughs> to fix it expensive but I know 10 quid a meter for, for, for fuel lines a lot of money but you really need to look at, at, at doing it to protect yourself from say the ethanol that's in the petrol now and what's going to be going in it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to burn people's cars it really is it's quite a scary time um, I don't know how this is going to go, so I'll probably report back on uh, in some future video. Um, it's supposed to be clampable, so this is obviously eight mil stuff. I don't know if you've seen you take the braid off. I haven't actually looked into it yet, and clamp on the actual um, Teflon on the inside. But we shall see, because you can get um, pipe finishes and stuff. But it's not easy when you've got a fuel pump which is barbed. Um, you've got the the bulb on the uh, fuel tank and I need a straight pipe on the engine so it's to get the right ones and uh, making sure it's safe is going to be interesting um, I'm hoping I can just clamp it down because I've read you can but say I'll give it a test and I'll let you guys know later but please guys look at fuel hoses look at replacing them as soon as you can if, if they've not been touched for a few years because I guarantee they need doing cheers